everyone. My husband and I have been doing IVF, and I have struggled with infertility. My grandpa, who I am very, very close to, passed away almost three years ago. And my grandma, who I was also close to, passed away almost two years ago. I'm a big believer that our loved ones can come back to help us in our most difficult times. We are about to transfer our first baby and are full of nerves. My mom called me and told me she had a dream that went like this. I was at a truck stop. It was loud, but I was at the phone booth. Your grandma was sitting right behind me. Your grandpa was on the other line of the phone. It was noisy and loud, but he kept saying, make sure she's on prednisone. She needs to be on prednisone over and over again. My mom called me the next day and told me prednisone is known for killing natural born killer cells that cause miscarriages. Pretty cool experience. Thank you, Grandpa, for always looking out for me. Hey guys and gals, just found this page and I just wanted to share my antidote from when I was 10 years old, back in 1996. My great aunt Boo Boo, real name Mary, lived in Chicago whilst I lived in Lansing, Missouri. I used to visit her in the summers with my grandma. Well, she passed away in the summer of 96. About four days after she passed, I was in my room playing video games when my TV started turning on and off and my bedroom light started flickering by itself. I immediately said out loud, Hi, Boo Boo, I know it's you, but can you please stop? I'm a little scared. It stopped immediately. This was real, and it was something I'll never forget. My now husband and I are living together in a small apartment when his grandmother passed away. She claimed to be a psychic medium and challenged a spirit guide in readings. Her Parkinson's and dementia really was getting to her near the end, so I never experienced a reading. Also, I'm pretty skeptical. I tend to believe what I see and experience. Do believe that unexplainable things can occur. My husband sleepwalks and talks often. I usually can tell when he's still asleep. Well, around 2 a.m., he shakes me awake saying, Hey, babe, look, look, wake up. He didn't sound like he was sleeping, so I begrudgingly asked what he wanted. He points to the darkest ceiling corner in the room and happily says, Look at the white woman. Then he turns over and peacefully goes back to sleep while I'm entirely spooked. This same occurrence happened three additional times. I was too chicken to look, and my response to him started to be, Nope, no one is there, no thank you. To this day, he doesn't remember seeing anyone. But now we have a son who occasionally looks at dark corners and laughs. Husband says it's probably just the white woman, who I assume is my grandma's spirit or energy. But still, I don't like unannounced guests. After my dog passed away, the next few nights at the end of my bed, I would be able to see and physically feel like paw prints, as if his spirit or ghost was walking around at the end, making his spot to sleep with me. I could feel his steps on my feet and legs ever so slightly with the covers over my feet. It looked like the blanket was making little popcorns or something, but I knew deep down inside that it was my dog visiting or something. something with his presence. That phenomenon that I observed stopped. It doesn't happen anymore. In the times it did happen, I would have a dream of my dog that very night. Do you have any idea why it may have stopped? What it may have been? And how to make it happen again?
I have three different videos of my cats reacting to whatever they are seeing or hearing during this one occasion. The third video shows my blonde cat hopping onto the gold chair to get a better look. Again, could be anything. Coupled with some of the other weird things that I wrote about in my first post, it's just a bit unnerving. Edit. Not sure why my first post and video aren't showing up. Maybe the video was too long? It was over three minutes. Anyways, it just showed my black cat staring at the same spot for several minutes and then moving closer to the brick wall and sitting and staring some more. Here is the body of the first post. I hate it when the cats are being weird. This happened a couple of weeks ago. I was walking by the door to our lounge and noticed our cat, Luna, just sitting and staring. So, I took this video. I actually took three videos because our other cat came in and started acting weird too. We've had this mannequin for a while now and they weren't staring at it, but behind it at the bricks. I don't know what they saw or heard, but nothing was there. I'm thinking maybe something from outside they could hear, but I couldn't. And last night I came back home after a brief errand and Luna was in the living room staring up into nothing again, moving his head as he followed whatever he saw with his eyes. I did get it on video, but not sure if I can post more than one video at a time. Earlier this week, I was on the sofa watching TV. The TV is on a lazy Susan that can rotate, but then I had to go outside to talk with a repairman. When I came back in about 15 minutes later, the television was turned almost 90 degrees. I didn't get a photo, but it was freaky, but I blamed one of the cats, thinking maybe he had just jumped on the TV cabinet and put all his weight on the TV so that it turned. Fast forward to last night, my partner had gone to bed, and at some point I noticed that one of our very large music speakers was rotated completely around, again around 90 degrees. So that, instead of facing out into the living room like it usually is, it was facing the front door foyer area. I showed my partner this morning and asked if he had turned it that way for some reason, and he said that he didn't remember ever turning it. There is no logical reason that we'd want to reject sound towards our front door. And then I noticed that both speakers were turned towards the front door. Again, he said he didn't remember doing it. When we last listened to records last week, that doesn't necessarily mean he didn't for some reason. He's a music guy, and he spun records for parties and events off and on for many years. So he's very knowledgeable about how music should be projected in any given room. He admitted that he can't imagine why he'd ever turn our speakers that way. He's more of a ghost skeptic, but says that it's very, very weird. I'll post photos in another post. Our house is almost 100 years old. Can't say that we've ever had any negative experience, just odd experiences like this one. But it's fine. I'm fine. Everything is fine. There is a history of witchcraft from where I am. There are numerous witch stories and incidents for centuries. The one I'm about to tell you is a real one that happened with me. So here I go. When I was seven to eight years old, I used to play with my buddy in a large field behind my house. It was winter when the terrifying incident occurred. The sun was setting down at 5.30 p.m., casting an eerie glow over the surroundings. My buddy and I had wandered quite far from home, and a thick layer of fog began to blanket the area. Knowing it was time to head back, we started walking, hoping to find the distant lights of our neighborhood. After a few minutes, we stumbled upon a small area filled with bamboo trees, a place we had seen before. In the middle of this eerie grove was a small pond. We grew uneasy as we realized this was in the opposite direction from our home. Confused and frightened, we turned around and ventured forward, our vision obscured by the fog. We walked carefully through the dried-up winter rice fields, barely able to see anything beyond our feet. Suddenly, 
we encountered an old lady on our path. She was hunched over, clutching a dusty cloth that resembled a bag. Her old sari was torn and worn, and she appeared to be a beggar. She approached us, thinking she might be trying to convey something to us. But as she uttered incomprehensible gibberish, a really bad rotten smell filled the air. Looking up at her, we saw her eyes glowing with a sinister yellow-red hue, and she began to laugh maniacally. Overwhelmed by fear, we sprinted away, desperate to escape her clutches. After what felt like an eternity, we finally found our homes. Trembling, I recounted the horrifying encounter to my family. My grandmother's face turned pale, and she hurriedly sprinkled Ganga water, holy water, on me, muttering prayers under her breath. She explained that we had come face to face with a daini, a witch. The next day, I fell gravely ill with a high fever that lasted for a week. To make matters worse, my friend contracted a severe case of pox shortly afterwards. His condition was far more agonizing than mine. This happened to me when I was around six to seven. I was sleeping in my parents' room because I had trouble sleeping alone. My parents' room was quite big with a double bed in the middle with a large full body mirror to the left. The room had lots of pictures and paintings of tigers since, since they were my dad's favorite animal. One day I woke up to my mom and my dad were gone and it was just me in the room. The room was dead silent. I was expecting for the fan to be blowing, but I woke up facing the mirror and in the reflection I saw one of the paintings had deformed. It looked like a human face but all mangled up. I was terrified. My eyes widened and I hid under the blanket with my eyes poking out watching the painting. I couldn't move. It was terrifying just watching me through the mirror. I knew it was just a tiger picture as I knew the room well since I grew up in the house. But I just felt like something changed. An hour goes by and I am wide awake watching the painting, still looking the exact same, even more terrified. My palms were getting sweaty from me holding the cover so tightly over my head. Another half hour goes by, still looks the same, but I muster up the strength to move the blanket and look at the painting dead on. I move the blanket and I look to my right and I see painting looking like how it normally did. But all the fear had just left my body as if the painting was feeding on fear. I think back on that day and remember the fear I felt, that painting still on the wall, and sometimes look in the mirror to think what I could have saw, but I just see the tiger. I don't know what it was. Was it because I was tired or my mind playing tricks, or did something demonic enter the painting and I just saw it showing itself to me?